Hi everyone, welcome back to Sunny Isle. And we've just added this second telecom tower onto this hill. And we should have boosted up our internet coverage now. Yeah, this was all looking pretty orange beforehand. And I think this is a, a good spot, if any. I think the other one is on this hill here. So we got a lot of the valley covered as well as the main town itself. And it's a pretty good spot for a telecom tower. It's on top of this little mound here, which I can imagine would be a really good place to create some sort of state park in the near future. So in between episodes, I like to make sure that the city isn't completely on fire. I just usually go through before recording um, all our different info panels just to check to see everything's okay. You know, for example, here we've got pretty good capacity for parking in the region. Education is really important in this game. If you fail to kind of meet up with demand, you will end up having a stagnated population where people who are uneducated, those that have never been to elementary school, they're not allowed to go to high school or college as adults. So elementary school is extremely important. So I've, I tried to keep on top of that. I've added this extra one in between what is now the old town and the warehouse district. And we have this little area in between the, the two neighborhoods that have these little awkward shapes. And I thought this would be a, a pretty good spot to at this elementary school with a tennis court, which unfortunately has filled up with homeless people now. So in the last episode, we started rebuilding the city after the fire that kind of took a big chunk out of our downtown area. And we used the road builder mod to widen some of these main roads through the city and out into the valley. We also added a light rail system using trams so that we can open up this area for development in the future. Having trams enables a, a large number of people to move through the city without causing that much traffic. And I do want to start building some of those much needed homes out here. But there's one piece of infrastructure that we've yet to put in and I think it's more than likely uh, to exist before the city grows any further and that is our uh, rail infrastructure. So at the moment on the map there is a what I've been calling the abandoned rail line. It's not connected to any outside connections but it does run past our border checkpoint and the incinerator plant and through these tiles that we yet to own. And then there's a little tunnel here and a stub that comes out. And if you've downloaded this modified version of the map that I created, you might notice that this rail line under here is actually not connected. And that wasn't done on purpose. That was a complete accident. But we can imagine perhaps this abandoned rail line had a tunnel collapse at some point. And uh, yeah, whether we want to reuse this tunnel or not, uh, we can uh, consider that in the future because given the fact that these uh, this is not a functional tunnel, we, we can uh, completely justify saying that this is a, an unsafe passageway and we should do something different. But that's a future issue. Uh, for now, I think we need to work out where we want the rail to run and position our train station. So from the very beginning of this series, I've wanted to add a station onto the harbour arm. And we even reserved some space along here using low density commercial and car parks. And I think either the, the small train station or the medium train station, one of them that came with the, the detailers patch would be a, a perfect fit here. But the issue is now we've got quite a lot of the town built up especially around this bridge bridge connection, which is a, a vital connection between the two halves of the city. So we'll have to be careful and considerate when we want to bring the rail through here. And I, I think this is probably the best way to bring the rail is along the river because we have the least amount of uh, buildings and road infrastructure in the way we have this bridge here. And then we've got our new bridge phoenix bridge in the distance but after that it's a it's a pretty clear way and i think we can probably come over the river at some point and then make our way out of the city either 
through the valley or maybe round the hill and maybe make use of that collapsed rail tunnel. Alternatively, I did consider putting the station along the beachfront here or even keeping it on the harbour arm and then having the rail swing round and create a new river crossing here and coming through this neighbourhood and then out, out up to South Bay. But I think that would be quite destructive, although it wouldn't be that much of an issue because I imagine maybe the rail would have been here before most of the homes. But I'm also not keen on having so many level crossing points, especially as I imagine this area is going to become very dense in the future with high rise buildings. And so I'm trying to figure out what is the uh, what what route will cause the least friction through here and I think through the river or along the river would be the best solution. I just think this is going to be a major cho choke point for sure. We have our custom road with the trams on the side coming through here and terminating at this small grassy area here which I think we can make something special here of course and yeah, no, I think that's that's going to be fine. I think it will be interesting uh, and I quite like having quite complex and intricate infrastructure in these downtown areas. So we'll start this build by clearing the harbour area, making space for one of the small train stations. And let's use a road with a key wall to define the edges of this harbour. Coming just out of town, we can also start to clear some space and use this new custom train depot by Tygon, which I managed to grab from the City Planner Place Discord server. I'm so happy that we can use a smaller asset on this island as the vanilla far too large for our needs at the moment. This depot does have a 25% reduction in the number of trains but also a 25% reduction in the running costs also so a win-win if you want to get the trains into your city when you don't have a large budget in mind and this is one of the first times I'm using fence networks that comes with the extra detailing mods So I went for the medium train station in the end. I really like the props that come with this with the, the little ticket office and the stairwell that runs over the tracks. Coming back to the bridge crossing in the town, we're going to take a look at the road builder and attempt to integrate the train tracks into the road itself. As you know, I like to keep my custom roads a set width. So we're looking at either three or four units, which is 32 meters, which is perfect here. And on the other side of the crossroad, we can upgrade it, but it's looking a little bit wonky. So I'm going to draw a clean road through, and that should give us a nice straight curve, which is perfect for the trains. And let's see if we can connect this up to our train station. It does seem that there's an issue with the current version of Road Builder where I'm not able to attach a train track to on a custom road that uses a retaining wall and train. So we'll come back to that and start to install our cargo rail line. And for this, we'll simply just be using the multi-direction single rail and cut this through the residential neighborhood with as minimal destruction as possible and similar to before i'm unable to connect to the custom road with a retaining wall so let's flatten the land out and see if we can just build this on flat land without any of the road upgrades
Okay, as you can see, it was very fiddly using the road builder and I'm not entirely sure I'm happy with the results. We did manage to connect up the tram tracks uh, through the rail and have this all kind of connect up. It seems to be working. And, and look at these tracks here. Look how janky this is. You've got tracks over tracks and this would just be a nightmare. It would just be so bumpy and when you connect rail up to a road you usually get a really nice clean level crossing i'll just quickly demonstrate using tracks here so let's just pull that through there we go and yeah like you can see here this is this is a really good model um from the paradox team this is the vanilla model and actually we are using the custom road here so let me just show you what this looks like with vanilla road so we don't get any of the, the strange artifacts but yeah this is nice that you've got this little concrete infill in between the tracks nice and smooth and these lovely little lights and barriers and i think that's i think that is a detail that i would love to have down here which i know is possible to add using props but i want to see them in use so i reckon this is basically a super node uh, with a rail coming in to the intersection i wonder whether we could do this in the base game without the road builder uh, taking advantage of that super super node technology and then we should be able to get some of those details in so i'll give that a go so using the roundabout trick and a little bit of anarchy we can start to feed through the train track and the existing roads through here and attempt to create a super node something that i probably would have done before road builder existed and test it out and while we're here we can also install the other level crossing which fortunately is a lot easier and connect it up to our depot and eventually our outside connection And back towards the harbour side of our new rail track, quite like to add some sort of river walk or a towpath that can be at a lower elevation to the main road. And I think this would be quite an interesting area to walk along. I do want this area to be highly walkable. This is going to be a centerpiece of the town where people will be able to move from one form of transport to another. All right, so we've got our super node in and we've got our barriers, which is exciting. You can see them coming down here now, but we do still get some of this jankiness with the tram tracks connecting up to the super node and coming over the track. And we might be able to use some prop magic uh, to kind of hide some of this, but yeah, still not super pleased with the results. I think there's probably a better way and I think one of the main issues is using this custom road here. I just don't think the tram tracks plays, plays nice with the road. And look, we've even got these strange indents coming in here. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the layout. We've got this medium train station here. Fits quite nice. We've got a little bit of space around it. We can play around with some of the rows around here and then we've also got this little river walkway which i think is super cute and uh yeah this this little ramp that comes up here which i've pretty much restricted to pedestrian traffic only and uh yeah it's uh it's pretty it's coming along all right let's start from scratch and remove this road and we'll remove this rail as well and bring this across. And if we can connect our rail up, I think we might be able to get this to work. 
Okay, so I went back to Road Builder to remove the tram track dedicated road and replaced it with a regular road with a tram upgrade. And it appears that is one way to get the level crossing to appear correctly. However, I did find that private vehicles and commercial vehicles were now using the tram tracks, which was annoying. So trying to fix that using the public transport road But as you can see, people are still using it to turn left, which is unfortunate. So in one last ditch attempt, I think if we can split these roads into two, we'll keep regular traffic on one side and then we'll use a normal road on the other, but we'll make it exclusively public transport road with a tram upgrade and it should function. and we get those beautiful tram tracks. Here I'm removing the left and right turns just to reduce anyone even thinking about using this road. Okay, I think we might have cracked the code. So what we've done here is we've got one set of lights which controls this intersection so the vehicles coming in and then we have a, a second node super close uh, which controls the the rail crossing and we even get these little barriers and the little lights here which i just think are absolutely adorable super cute and we've even got one on this side too even though that this segment is absolutely tiny and i'm sure we'll see some issues in the future but Generally speaking, people are not blocking the tracks, which surprises me. The only thing I think would be the cherry on top for this is if we could synchronize these intersections. So this set of lights along with the rail barriers, that would be fantastic because this is an issue you can see here where the, the tram stops at these lights and it, it does wait over the track, unfortunately. But yeah, pretty happy with that. And to get the tram tracks to go over the rail nice and clean with the, with the correct rendering, we did end up having to break this out into two separate roads. So this is a regular road here, and then I've upgraded it with the public transport lane upgrade so that vehicles should, shouldn't use it. And because I've turned off left and right movements, and it's only straight on. Uh, you won't get private vehicles using it because they can only use bus lanes if they're going to be turning at the next intersection. So yeah, this is this is working quite nice and we do get a little bit of a break in the medium, but I'm, I'm happy with it. It looks interesting. And uh, yeah, we've got the river access here. Yeah, we just need to start to detail this area. And I think in this, space we can start to develop some sort of old town plaza since since we are regarding this as the old town the 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 part of town that never got destroyed by fire so i imagine a lot of the buildings are more historical and older and this is now becoming a bit of a transport hub we've got the tram terminus here we've got the bus stop here we've got the taxi stand there and then just down the way People can walk and get to the train station and the ferry harbour. And I'd like to make this area extra special. And I'll be doing that by using some of our new detailing mods. And I think I'm not really into detailing the whole city. Even though I would say that I am a keen detailer when it comes to maximizing space by using zone grids and different zoning patterns but when it comes to props fences and other similar things i've not really delved into that yet so this will be my first time doing it properly and i think this is a really good opportunity to do that this is a an area of the city that we'll 
probably revisit very often and it's a good idea to make those areas special. So let's crack on with that. Okay, so far the plaza has got its first layer of detail. I started using these skate pack boxes, which I think we could use as flower beds. And I've chose, chosen quite a nice fountain down in the center here. It's a modest size, but I think it's just such a beautiful asset with these fish coming in. I, I kind of like to imagine it reflects the old industry of the area where there would have been plenty of fishing involved and we can start to bring in some of the benches the trees and some of the other details i didn't really want to go for a larger fountain i think it's quite easy as a city skylines player to just want to fill space with the largest objects that we can find and you know, I, I always see people just randomly plopping down trees and other things, but I think it's really important to also have some open spaces. To make an area detailed, I think you have to do it in layers, in broad strokes. So start with a foundation and then just start adding different things in layers and don't try to 
fill the the gaps as much as possible because I think eventually it does come together quite nicely. We'll also add some trees too uh, because I, I do want this to be one of those spaces which could be classed as a cold zone. So in hot climate countries these public spaces are often quite well maintained and quite shady and encourage people to just relax and sit and stay cool and they're a, they're a vital part of the society it's a good place for people to meet of different ages um, so we'll try to make this special and we'll also want to have a look at urbanizing this area as well since we've got quite a large movement of people it seems only right that we have some commercial businesses here too not these factories which uh, Julie out of place although I do like these little warehouses here I do think they're almost like a remnant of the old fishing industry that used to be down here so we'll try to keep maybe one or two of these here but you can see here we've already started to upgrade some of these areas where we've had to replace the zoning so we've got a little bit of mixed use here this little roundabout bringing people up to the train station which has been detailed with a few trees and we've got a couple of shops down here where people can grab a coffee or a drink and walk down the harbour. I think it's uh, it's looking really nice. I'm really excited uh, how this is coming together. And uh, yeah, thank you for bearing with me while I'm getting used to the detailing mods. This is all new to me. And just add in a few little props. I think what we've got like five props here, max, maybe six. It just really helps integrate the asset into the environment really nicely. I love that. This is so pretty.
And there we go, a great addition to the town. I hope you enjoyed today's build. It was fun trying out new tools and mods. And I want to give a special thanks to you. Whether you're a YouTube watcher, a Reddit upvoter, or a Discord loiterer, I thank you all for making the City Skylines community so welcoming and enjoyable to be a part of. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. We also have some perks for channel members if you're interested in that too. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.